on one hand, basically, you have, you know, you could argue that we have a, a view on certain markets or macro themes, etc. But each and every deal, you have to take a couple bets, right? And so you, you may make certain bets on one deal that may not even correlate to the bets you're making on a different deal. I think it's difficult to make a general characterization across Europe because I've, I've found over the years that every country in Europe is actually still quite different from one another. And that's not just with respect to you know the operating partners or the regulatory or the employment law or all the other variables that come with you know the operating business of hotel real estate. Um, and and I, I think there are different opportunities in different countries for different profile of investors. So I think if you look at Germany, I don't think it's necessarily a place where you're going to see a lot of high returns on capital because uh, there's so much compression in that market right now. So it's a difficult market for private equity. Um, it's a great market for private equity who have come in earlier, bought some things that needed to be fixed, cleaned up, institutionalized, and then sell on to longer term institutional mm -hmm. capital. And I think that works fantastically well. It can work good for everybody involved. Um, but then if you move on um, to Spain, which is a country that's obviously evolving with regards to its capital markets, with regards to uh, the consolidation of the industry, and uh, new entrants in, re in respect of investor profiles. So it's not just you know all the talk about Sosimis, but it's also institutional investors starting to um, not only look at urban hotels in Spain, but to actually extend that further on into the resort space, which has proven to be a very resilient sector over the last you know, five to ten years, even through the downturn. Um, so, but if you then, you, you can move further out, right? And then, and that's always the temptation uh, as the cycle gets further along, that people move further afield, whether it's further into Eastern Europe, whether it's into the Baltics, whether it's in the Adriatic. Whether, and so, I think different profiles, different markets, different opportunities, different strategies. So, we're pretty kind of flexible from that perspective. Um, we definitely do, we are driven by some macro th themes um, and look for dislocation in, in capital, broken processes, and we're happy to do a lot of what we do off market, which tends to mean that you have to invest a lot of additional time with the shareholders, the stakeholders, uh, local government, and work on things that basically people would rather keep, you know, behind the scenes. I, th I think I would have to, to start by, by, by saying that I, that I almost one-on-one -on -one agree with what Keith is saying. I mean, opportunities are very different. It looks, it depends on where you come from. I met not so long ago with, a, with an Asian investor, a, a Reed, and I was asking him, what are you particularly in this environment, this was a couple of weeks back, what are you particularly looking for in Europe? What would you, where would you invest your money? And his answer would, would be Germany, Holland, and maybe the UK because of the low pound. You know, that was his answer. And I asked him, what you, how about France? Politically unstable, you know, and, and very, the, the regulations unreliable, difficult. Belgium, let's just skip the subject. You know, that, that's really what his answers were. And, you know, I thought, well, you know, you, you're actually spot on. <laughs> but at the end of the day, there, there's one of the questions that, that you will ask yourself. If you put your own money, where would you put it? You know, and it's it's that Keith has answered it. It depends on what you want your money, what you re, what you want your returns to be. I mean, there are areas, for instance, the more north you go, if you go to the Baltics and you know, Sweden, Norway, Norway, they're very, they're very, very, you know, uh, bolted markets, I would say. But if you look at some of the Baltics, where there's a lot of a lot of development going on, a lot of tourism coming in, and it becomes easier to go there. It's an opportunity area, for sure, you know, and people are not looking at it because we tend to look south to more areas where we know what the dynamics are. So if you really want to explore, look at a country like Croatia. Yes, we know infrastructure is difficult and a lot of stuff needs to be done, but they did hop on to the, the, uh, the EU bandwagon, so they've got to, you know, they, they actually have access to, 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 to northern capital, so to speak, and the labor laws are still very difficult, but, you know, if you look at Montenegro, which is growing very, very fast from a tourism perspective. And right now, you would imagine that, that because of the, the, the trouble in Turkey and the trouble in North Africa, the more areas you can find that are not there today, like Greece is there, Italy is there, Portugal is fast moving and, 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 and picking up. Spain, as Keith said, has proven to be very resilient. From an opportunity point of view, 
countries like Montenegro and, and, and Croatia are certainly opportunities. Uh, still a long way to go, but, you know, have a look at it.